to the Insight Channel, your user's guide to living life with vision loss. I'm Jazz, I'm a blind occupational therapist, and I'll be your guide. Staying oriented is a full sensory experience. The more you become aware of the sounds and smells and landmarks in your environment, the better you are going to be at staying oriented. Now the tools you use differ depending on if you are traveling outdoors on foot or if you're in a bus. Or if you're traveling indoors in a large space like a shopping mall or hospital versus a smaller area like a home, an apartment, or even a hotel room or your place of work. Today I'm going to focus on those smaller spaces. So the only tools you're going to need are your senses of hearing, smell, touch, and proprioception. I'll even throw in a little tip on light perception for those of you who still like to use residual vision. Let's start with sound. There are two major ways that sound can help you to get oriented. First, sound is bouncing all around you. So you can judge a room just by listening to the way sound is bouncing off of the walls, the ceiling, and the floors. For example, if you are in an enclosed space like a hallway or a small room like this one, the sound is gonna be different than if you're in a large space like this one. Can you hear the difference? Second, there are sounds in our environments that we can use as landmarks. Now landmarks are elements in our environment that don't change. So that means we can use them to figure out where we are. For example, the kitchen is a great landmark because it's full of appliances that are always plugged in and so there's usually a subtle hum going on. Other sounds in our environment that we don't really think about until they go away are things like ceiling fans or vents or even the air conditioner. These sounds are always there guiding us through our environment. It's like this ice maker behind me. I don't even know it's there unless it's off. It's a lot like when you lose power. We don't realize how much sound is actually moving around us until it's gone. Hear the difference? Likewise, there are smells in your environment that can serve as landmarks if you pay attention. For example, your kitchen is always going to smell different than your bedroom or your bathroom. And your laundry room is always going to smell different from your living room. S fragrances that are around your home can, are a great way to stay oriented. Things like uh, candles, potpourri, even books, plants, or pet paraphernalia can be used to help you to know where you are. Explore your environment to recognize the sounds and smells that are unique to your home and workplace. I bet you'll be surprised at how much information is available to you. If you have low vision, the lighting in your home can actually be used to help you to stay oriented. So choose lighting concepts that are meaningful to you and will help to guide you through your environment. For example, strategically placing Night lights throughout your home can serve as landmarks to help you stay oriented. Having a spotlight over a mantle or pendant lights or even using string lights can create ambiance in your environment, but they're also great landmarks for helping you to know where you are. Now let's explore how touch and proprioception can help you to orient. I'd like to first point out that movies and television give the impression that people who are blind get from one place to another by counting steps. That might work for some people under very specific circumstances, but it is not common practice for someone without sight to move around in his or her everyday environment uh, by counting steps. It's all about body memory and what it feels like to get from one place to the other. If you've lived in your home for a while, you should be able to comfortably move from room to room without counting your steps. It's because your brain gets a feel for the rhythm and the body movements that you do over and over again each day. This is proprioception at its best, and we don't even realize we're using it. If you don't believe me, close your eyes and try moving between your bed and your bathroom or your kitchen and your table just to get a feel for it. You'd be surprised how easy it is. 
Though it's easy to understand how your sense of touch can help you to get familiar with an unfamiliar space, there is a recommended technique to do it to make sure that you stay safe and don't knock anything over. It's called trailing. And it begins with you putting the back of your hand on the wall around waist height and slightly in front of you with your fingers slightly bent. This will keep you from jamming them if you run into something. So as I'm following the wall, my hand is perfectly at a position to find any furniture that might be in the way. And then I'm going to just follow that furniture around until I get back to the wall again. When you're trailing through a new environment and there might be an obstacle that could potentially hit you in the face, there is another protective arm technique that you can use. And I'll show you right now. I'm trailing with my right hand on the wall and I'm going to take my left arm and bring it up about shoulder height with my hand in front of my face, palm facing away from me and elbow bent, so I'm about 12 inches out. So as I'm trailing, if there's something that could possibly hit me, my hand is gonna find it first. Here I am in an unfamiliar bedroom. So if you're familiarizing yourself with a new space, you want to move slowly in case there's something on the ground that could trip you up. Picture each room as a box and keep track of the walls as you're going so you know when you get to the end. When you find a door, go ahead and close it and you can always go back to it later. When you get to a point where your furniture's in the way, go ahead and use the furniture to continue trailing around the room till you get to the end. And I've reached the end of the fourth wall. Here I am. If you have difficulty staying oriented in your own home, doors can actually become useful landmarks. For example, a lot of folks have trouble when they wake up in the middle of the night and need to find the bathroom quickly. So one technique you can do would be to make sure that your bathroom door is always closed, but your bedroom door is open. So when you feel a closed door, you know you're in the right place. Another technique you could do would be to mark the doorknob of the bathroom so that when you feel something on that knob you'll know that you've reached the bathroom. Here I have a big red scrunchie that's real easy to feel. If you have residual vision you can always use a night light to plug in close to the bathroom to serve as a guide to help you get where you need to go quickly. Another helpful technique for staying oriented is called squaring off, which focuses on the use of alignment in space to help you get from one place to another. For example, when I'm seated on the edge of my bed, like I am now, I know that my bathroom door is directly across from me. So when I stand up, I want to make sure that the back of my legs are touching the bed, which puts me going in the right direction to reach the wall on the other side. Now this technique is great when you don't have a shoreline to follow with your cane or a wall to trail. So I just had my arm up to protect my face. I found the wall across from me and now I found the door. Once you familiarize yourself with the physical landmarks in your environment and how they align with each other, squaring off can actually be an effective and efficient way to get around. For example, I know that when I find the doorknobs on this hall closet, if I square off and put my back to it, and walk straight across the hallway, it'll bring me right to my bedroom door. So now you have insight into how this works. You do not need vision to get familiar with new spaces or to stay oriented in your own space. Explore the sounds, smells, and textures of your environment and get to know the physical landmarks that are already there to help you to get around. Take your time, use good trailing techniques, and protective arm techniques to keep you safe as you go and also use squaring off to help you efficiently and effectively get around your environment. You can create your own auditory olfactory lighting or physical landmarks to help you. Our 
bodies have been designed to take in sensory information from our environment. So put your senses to work for you so that you can stay mobile and stay oriented. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up at the bottom of your screen. Be sure to subscribe so you'll know when I post new videos every two weeks. And be sure to send me your comments, your ideas, or your questions. I'd love to hear from you. My job is to help give you the tips, tools, and techniques you need to be a success with vision loss. So no worries, you got this. See you next time.